we went through two years of fertility treatments. Um, nothing worked. We had two miscarriages and we weren't able to conceive. We were ecstatic when we finally got pregnant. Every time we went to the doctor, I kept asking her, so I'm still pregnant? And she goes, yeah, you're still pregnant. My husband would just roll his eyes because <laughs> he knew I was pregnant by the way I was acting probably. <laughs> Dominic was our miracle, he was our everything, and he was an amazing baby. It was great, everything was fine and wonderful, and then just before his 11th month birthday, he just got acting a little weird, and uh, just wasn't really quite himself, and he was just off. And I take him to the local pediatrician, and he spends about two minutes looking in Dominic, leaves, the room, comes back about 10 minutes later and says, well, I've called the Alberta Children's Hospital in Calgary. The ER is expecting you guys to be there. And we're like, okay, like, what is going on? We spent eight hours in the ER, and then when they came in and told us, you just collapse. It's just, it's the worst possible day of your life. Dominic was diagnosed on September 12th. 2013, diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Cancer sucks. When we had Dominic, we never envisioned him ever needing to go to a, a children's hospital. The care that we got at the Alberta Children's Hospital was, was second to that. We couldn't have asked any more. Whether it was medically, whether it was psychologically, treating us with respect and including us in the decisions. Just the amount of joy on his face as he went through those hallways and you know seeing him chase down the cleaning staff in the hallways and follow him on their on their floor waxers in his in his little walker. He was never scared of the hospital. I was always tell him, oh we're gonna go see, you know, Ellen and Dr. Trong. He'd be all like, okay, let's go. <laughs> we we're gonna do four rounds of uh, chemotherapy. There were so many months where he was stuck in isolation in those hospital rooms. We found out that there was a music therapist who would come in once a week, and that music was, was so good for him. Dom always loved music, and we always, you know, had music playing for him in the house. And he had that time to forget where he was, and for us to forget where he was. Wheels on a bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on a bus go round. Whenever we'd put on music, we'd have to have a dance party. The boy wanted to dance. <laughs> so when it came time to do like serious medical procedures, like his bone marrow transplant, I think is the sort of the best example. It's a scary moment for any parent. All we could think of was we should really dance. He took both of the nurse's hands and our hands, and we all danced for a while. <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, good boy. We had two months at home. Uh, we went to Calgary regularly, like weekly, for appointments still. But five out of the seven days a week, we were at home, which was the first time we'd really been home since he was diagnosed. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Man down. He's nonverbal. We used sign language to find out things that he wanted, and one of them was a thumbs up. And so one of them became thumbs up because it was just, OK, are you doing OK? You know, I'd be like, Dom, are you okay? And he'd give me a thumbs up. I'd be like, okay, you're good. That thumbs up really became his trademark. He wouldn't eat, and so it was a big deal then, the few times that he would actually go back to trying to start to eat some solid foods. He started eating, and all I could think of was... Wow, this is the perfect time to play Eat It by Weird Al Yankovic. When my Aunt Mary Catherine came back from Disneyland with, the, with a marching band mace that really was a lightsaber in disguise, uh, I, ha I, I had couldn't help myself but put on the Darth Vader music and, you know, have him dance around with it. <laughs> Monkey Daddy! <laughs> we were at 100% donor. Everything was great. Everything was perfect, just the way it was supposed to be in June. And then in August, we found out that his system is stronger than the donor's was. Everything was for naught, and that our bone marrow transplant had failed. And 
That was very, very devastating. Um, like I said, that was the only known treatment for his type of cancer that he had. My husband and I sat there crying. We gave ourselves a couple minutes. And then we looked at our doctor and our nurse. We said, okay, now what? <laughs> What's the next step? There has to be a next step. Throw it. Ah! Yeah, way to go, Dominic. We tried just giving him boosts of the bone marrow from the donor and hoping that maybe it will fight. We spent a lot more time in the hospital because we were trying different treatments and such. December 24th, the doctors came and told us that Dominic was terminal. That there was nothing left. They basically said, go home, enjoy, enjoy what time you've got. We think you've only got a few weeks. It's more wrapping paper. More wrapping paper. I signed him up for swimming lessons. Oh. And I signed him up for gymnastics lessons. All the little things you don't think about that he couldn't do for two years. Smile at the camera. We finally got approved for a wish trip. We got to go to Orlando, Florida, go to Disney World, which is what every little kid would want to do. So it was all set up for us to go in to the oncology unit at the Arnold Palmer Hospital. When we were in Orlando for those, for those three days at the end, they brought in a music therapist and um, it was a little bit of home. There was that, that same sort of music therapy program at a hospital thousands of miles away. It sort of helped bring everything together. And we got to Disney World for a grand total of two hours. And the last ride that you did was the Buzz Lightyear ride, which is essentially a video game ride, which with Extra Life is very appropriate. <laughs> we thought that we'd go to Universal the next day, but instead of going to Universal, we woke up and he wasn't breathing right. And that was the beginning of the end. So suddenly we were calling an ambulance and suddenly he was turning blue and I was in the ambulance with him and Trish had to go and get something from the car and he was just going downhill real quick. I told him, you gotta wait for mommy. The way I found out about Extra Life was through a friend of ours whose brother had participated in Extra Life and as soon as I looked into it and saw what it was, it was like, wow, this is perfect. I love video games. Here I am at the hospital. We want to give back to the hospital. Well, all of that just meshed perfectly together. So the first year that they did it, they raised $4,300 and shaved his head. <laughs> the next year, he raised $8,300. This year, not only did we raise a heck of a lot more money, we decided that we would set some bigger goals at $20,000. Sean's like, so what would it take for you to shave your head? And I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Donate live, you can go to extra-life.org. Suddenly we had other friends jumping in and saying, if we help you get to $30,000, We'll all shave our heads. We'll shave the heads of our kids. <laughs> and then I said, just as a joke, if you raise $45,000, <laughs> I'll wax my back. <laughs> Not a chance will they get that high. This year we raised almost $46,000. That was painful. Getting involved is the easiest thing possible. All you gotta do is go to extra-life.org and sign up. Pick a hospital, create a team, don't create a team. Join a team, don't join a team. It doesn't matter. Tell people what you're doing, that you've pledged to play games to give back to a children's hospital. It was amazing how that community suddenly unfolds for you when you need it. And our community here wanting to help us help the hospital when we called for it. When we wrote Dominic's obit, we said in there, in lieu of flowers and gifts, please donate to the Alberta Children's Hospital through Extra Life. 
and boy did they ever. And those hospitals are able to use the funds to try and make the life of these children a little bit better. We have an amazing community here. Everyone rallied around. We ended up having Dominic's memorial service at the Esplanade in Medicine Hat. We had about 350 people there. We all started with our thumbs up. And then at the end, true to Dom, we had a dance party, <laughs> which probably seems very odd to a lot of people. It was amazing to see 350 people crying, laughing, and dancing. He inspired so many people, and I think it's important not to, to say that even in the past tense too much. He inspires so many people.